So in the previous video, I went that the went over that the objective of the course was to learn how to design DSP systems, so digital signal processing system to process signals. I also mentioned that although we are going to learn a lot of techniques, you should keep in mind that there are two main problems, two main problems that we are trying to solve. The problem of analysis, especially spectral analysis, looking at the frequency content of signals and systems, and then the problem of processing, how to design filters to transform the signals in the way that we want to. Now, we should start thinking about what are the main advantages. Advantages of doing this using VSP, Digital Signal Processing, as opposed to just do analog filters and analog processing. So if we are thinking about the analog system, let's take a filter for instance, analog filter or system, we have an analog continuous time signal going in, and it is transformed into another signal at the app, right? Now, to do this in DSP, we're going to need to have a digital signal processor. VSP, digital signal processor. And the input to the digital signal processor needs to be a digital signal. I'm going to denote it as X of N as opposed to X of T. I will use T for continuous time in this course and for discrete time. And it's going to give me an output Y of N. If the signal that we are working with is already a digital signal, fine. Um, but if it is a continuous time signal, an analog signal, we will need to do analog to digital conversion. We're going to look at <coughs> this process more in detail and the parts of an analog to digital converter from the point of view of DSP, looking at sampling and aliasing. But effectively, if you're starting with this X of T, first you need to sample, it, measure it at periodic time intervals, quantize it, so you do analog to digital conversion to get the X of N, then you do the processing in DSP using a digital signal processor, you get the output also in digital form, and then we need to actually do the digital to analog conversion to get Y of T. So as you can see, to do DSP, we need to add a front-end analog to digital conversion and a back-end digital to analog conversion circuit. It, it appears more complicated. So again, what are the advantages given that these are the building blocks that seem to add some complexity? The key advantages of DSP going to list a couple. So number one is performance. You're going to see that we can design very good filters. We can do very good analysis, be able to do these systems. Uh, in a way that they are very accurate. We, they are very flexible, meaning you can reprogram them. The same DSP does multiple functions, is the same processor, but it can do a spectral analysis, FIR filtering, IIR filtering, can do adaptive filtering, can do a lot of stuff. Uh, a lot of the problems that we have in analog, drift with temperature, etc. Uh, so I'm going to say here, no drift with temperature. Therefore, we have more reproducibility. Um, <clears throat> you can do data storage. In summary, you're going to see the DSP the reason why it is everywhere in in every self smartphone that you use in computers in 
in just about all multimedia applications, all communication applications, is because it is the most, the highest performance, most flexible way to implement these functions. It's a key building block of electronics. Right now, any complex electronics, going from a smartphone all the way to a medical device with automatic diagnosis, etc., is going to need to have DSP building blocks. And so those are the key advantages. And uh, the cost is that you do need, if you are starting with a signal that is um, analog, you do need to do the analog to digital conversion and then convert it back. But these right now are relatively inexpensive components um, to be able to implement your system. Now, let's talk a little bit about a course in DSP. When you're doing a course in DSP, what type of background do you need in terms of mathematics? You probably hear that DSP is, DSP courses tend to be the most mathematically intensive courses in the electrical engineering curriculum. And uh, the theory of, of, of signals and systems and DSP, this is not only used now in EE and not only in DSP. You use it in control systems, you use it in communications. It, it is the, it's foundational for most graduate level and advanced level engineering research. Um, again, not only in engineering, you use this in econometrics, you use this throughout fields. So what are the mathematics? So number one, you need the mathematics of linear system theory. I'm going to call them LTI, linear time invariant systems, that most of you have taken a course in Laplace transforms where you learn the Laplace transform, so you know how to look at the circuit in the S domain, um, you know to assess how when a system is linear, when it is time invariant, um, properties like the impulse responses of a system and how it characterizes the system, step response, etc. This type of mathematics are going to be useful in our course. And Fourier analysis. And we're going to review this, so no worries. But in Fourier analysis, the key idea, let me just put here the key idea, You are familiar with the with Fourier series or the continuous time Fourier transform. The, the key idea, if you recall, is that any signal, loosely speaking, any signal can be decomposed, practically speaking, not mathematically speaking, as a sum of sinusoids, right? So sinusoids are going to be the building blocks, and this is why we are going to review them in just a future video here. Um, they are going to be the building blocks of all other signals, meaning if you think a signal, let's do something like this. This is my signal x of t, this is time. The idea is that this signal is a sum of a low frequency sinusoid, let's imagine that this is one second, so a two hertz sinusoid, plus a high frequency one, plus a high frequency one, is this idea of Fourier analysis. We pick a signal that may not look sinusoidal at all, but we are able to decompose it into the building block sinusoid. So here you have the first sinusoid, here you have another one, there may be others. And again, the signals do not have to look, as a starting point, sinusoidal at all. But this is going to be key. Um, now, if you forgot about Fourier series or the Fourier transform um, or your LTI system theory, we will quickly review it in, in, in this course, so don't worry. But these are the fundamental mathematics that you need, nothing to be concerned about. And with that mathematics, 
we're going to be able to design DSP systems uh, that have all these key advantages. Overall, just think performance, and they are ubiquitous. They are throughout all electronic devices nowadays. Now, 